quite clear, that we know what they mean, might not be as clear as we think that they are in particular race and ethnic categories that are oftentimes in a state of transition, a state of being established. So I brought in some slides of pictures of people, some famous, some not. Anybody familiar with Vladimir Guerrero from the Angels? Angels is the Orange County baseball team. And the question that I ask and that other baseball players have asked is, is Vladimir Guerrero black? Does anybody know who this is? Have you heard of him? Yeah? Where is he from originally? Where was he born? He's from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, he's from the Dominican Republic, right? Raised and born in the Dominican Republic, now lives in the United States, plays baseball. Is Vladimir Guerrero black? We're going to go back to this. Are these Mexican American men brown? In this photo, they're actually in Jalisco, Mexico. Are they brown? Are these mixed tech girls? This is the uh, photo taken in Oxnard. These are girls that are mixed tech, uh, indigenous population in Mexico. Are they Hispanic? And here's Carmen Diaz. Is Carmen Diaz Latina or is she white? Going back to our first Vladimir Guerrero, there was actually a controversy last year where a fellow baseball player from his team, Tori Hunter, said that Vladimir Guerrero is not black and he actually uh, called him an imposter. He's not really black, he's an imposter um, because he's Latina. And he argued that, in fact, he's not African American because he's from the Dominican Republic, right? Different cultural heritage, different history. Think about what you think of when you look at Vladimir Guerrero, if you watch by Vladimir Guerrero, what would you assume about his identity? What would you assume about his ethnicity? What would you assume about his culture? If all you saw was him walking, you can only see his face, his hair, the way he looks, his phenotype. I brought in this photo, um, are these Mexican Americans brown? In California, people oftentimes racialize Latinos as brown, creating a connection to a phenotype, a skin color, a way of looking. Um, but these young men could also be white, I would argue. Right? They could also be part of what sometimes we call a white ethnic group, much like Italians or Jewish people of Jewish ancestry or Jewish heritage have been incorporated into white categories over time. These mixed tech girls are interesting because they're living here in California. Um, originally, they are from Mexico, but the mixed tech community is an indigenous community that speaks the native language is Mixteco, have some different ethnic uh, heritage, different cultural traditions than dominant Mexican populations. Mixtec and other uh, indigenous folks from Mexico that come to the United States are often assumed to be fluent in Spanish, assumed to be part of uh, the more dominant, I would say, Mexican population. And sometimes there's, there's problems with the, uh, when they come in contact with um, health providers, and they bring in a Spanish translator, but in fact need a Mixteco translator and don't have it. So there's assumptions about these girls in their community as well. And then finally, finally Carmen Diaz. Carmen Diaz actually self-identifies as Latina, and she says that she's very proud of her Latino heritage. She's a local. She was uh, raised in Long Beach here in our local community, and her father is from Cuba, much like your professor, and her mother says that she is European American, European American. But Carmen Diaz does identify and says that her Latino roots are very important to her, very important to her identity. Yet she's oftentimes assumed to be white, to not have that element of Latino culture, to not be Latino because of her blue eyes, blonde hair, and because she's tall. So let's talk a little bit about just these definitions. Now, for some of you, 
you taken sociology classes, this is going to be your view because you had this in the unit. But I wasn't sure what um, type of background everyone had, so we're going to go through these just a little bit. So what is race? With those first pictures, I'm hoping to give this idea that it's a little bit more complicated than we oftentimes think. Um, race is a socially constructed categorization that specifies rules for the identification of a given group based on perceived innate physical similarities. So when oftentimes when we think about race, we think about phenotype or how people look. People think about the texture of the hair, the shape of the eyes, the color of the skin, right? But sociologists, anthropologists, and other social scientists really challenge a strict definition of race being just about how people look, right? That in fact these categories, these racial, ca racial categories are socially constructed and they emerge in particular time periods and in particular countries. So we see that racial categories actually vary across the world. In the United States, traditionally we had a one drop rule. So any, if you had one drop of black blood you were seen legally as African American, and what that meant historically was that you did not have the same access to resources, you didn't have the same rights and privileges. Still today, we oftentimes still have this one drop rule categorization of race. So if someone is multiracial, if they have a, a variety of ancestries, they're still seen oftentimes by outsiders as black, right? Now they themselves may identify as black or they may not. They may identify as mixed race. What's interesting about the Dominican Republic, and that's where Vladimir Guerrero comes from, where he was born, is that in the Dominican Republic, they turn this one drop rule on its ear, it's reverse. So if you have any part white, you're now non-black, right? So Vladimir Guerrero most likely would not be seen as black. The black category is reserved for Haitians primarily, which people from Dominican Republic try very hard to distinguish themselves from. What happens with people from Dominican Republic when they migrate to the United States, they find that how they've always seen themselves is not how they're seen by the U.S. population. So they look the same, their skin is the same, their hair is the same, their own self-definition is the same. Then they come to the United States and people categorize them as black in a way that they never themselves thought of themselves as black before coming to the United States. Um, Peggy Lovett has done some research on this and she was curious, she does research on transnational migration and Dominican uh, communities, was curious whether this new categorization would stick, whether migrants would come, be categorized by others as black, and then if they return back to the Dominican Republic, would they see themselves as black now? And she found that they did it, that folks from the Dominican Republic, specifically first generation, really resisted the U.S. categorization scheme, did not see themselves as black. What researchers find, though, as future generations, second generation, third generation, <coughs> that kids in future generations do tend to opt into the U.S. racial categorization system. So they might begin to adopt how we see them as their own category, in part because they're treated from birth as different, as black, as something different than the typical Latino. <coughs> Excuse me. In Brazil, there's actually multiple racial categories between white and black that are uh, agreed upon pretty much by the white republic. And they also, you could have this, this experience, thank you, of the same person living in two different countries and having the society, the government, really have a very different system, a very different way of understanding who they are in terms of racial categories. Okay, so then what about ethnicity, right? Most people in the United States don't think of ethnicity and race being different. They think of them as being the same thing. But in fact, <coughs> sociologists have argued for a long time that ethnicity is different, that ethnicity is linked to a shared identity that arises from a sense of distinctive history. And if you want to think <coughs> about what's different with ethnicity, think about culture, customs, traditions, and language, right? That different ethnic groups 
of different traditions, different culture, different customs. Uh, I asked ask the group, do we have different ethnic groups in Western Europe? Yeah. Yes, right? Yeah, Western Europeans are categorized racially as white, right? White, but ethnicity is more complex. There's multiple ethnicities within particular racial categories. And that's why the mixed egg girls can have a mixed egg ethnicity, right? but still be in Mexico. Okay, now nationality, another different category to talk about. So nationalities are groupings of people based on political borders. And this is important because within a political border, within Mexico, for example, um, there can be multiple ethnicities or multiple racial groups. Right? So a country can have multiple ethnic groups. That's the case with Mexico. It's the case with many countries around the world. Turkey has multiple ethnic groups with distinct culture, distinct language, distinct heritage within one national government, right? Within one state. Okay, so people time people oftentimes want to know well what's the difference between Mexican, Chicano, Hispanic, Latino, Mexican American, are these different terms? Do they mean the same thing? Are the synonyms or are they different? If someone is Mexican, Mexican oftentimes refers to nationality, right? We're thinking about Mexican, we're thinking about nationality. But as I said, Mexico has many, many diverse ethnic groups, primarily indigenous groups. Okay. Mexico also has a strong history of mestizaje or mixing that's part of the heritage of the country and that has shaped who Mexicans are, right? Mixing of uh, people from European or Western European ancestry, originally with the Spanish colonization, mixing with indigenous groups, also mixing with African Americans, or excuse me, people of African ancestry. Um, here in Whittier, we have Pio Pico State Historic Park. It's right down the road from us on Whittier Boulevard. Pio Pico was the last Mexican governor of California before California became a part of the United States, Pio Pico has African ancestry. So Pio Pico uh, was, if he was put into a racial category today with the one drop rule, he would be black. Yet, he's also Mexican, and he is a product of this mestizaje, right, of this mixing. Okay, so Hispanic and Latino are umbrella classifications that include multiple racial and racialized categories as well as ethnicity. This is getting back to Vladimir Guerrero, right? Who is from Dominican Republic and he's also Latino, though he might actually self-identify as Dominican. He might not see himself as Hispanic. The reason I say that is because Hispanic and also Latino are pretty much U.S. classifications. Hispanic started in the 1970s, um, Latino in the 1990s, and it's this umbrella categorization that includes multiple ethnic groups, people from all around Latin America, right? Plus people who were born in the United States who might be third, fourth generation. Um, very diverse category. People with a lot of different histories, different experiences in the United States, and different cultures as well. Um, U.S. Census asks people if they are non-Hispanic white. This is because Hispanics can also choose a white or black racial classification. So in the U.S. Census, you can be Hispanic, and you can also be white, or you can also be black. Chicano is commonly seen as a politicized Mexican-American. Uh, Chicano identity, the Chicano classification, also became popular in the 1970s. And when people think of Chicanos, these are Mexican-Americans, people who were uh, most likely born and raised in the United States, um, and also feel strongly about a Chicano identity that's something unique, right? Something that's not 100% Mexican, something that's not 100% from the dominant um, white population, something that is unique and that should be fought for, right, for rights. 
Chicano identity and uh, Chicano departments are connected to really civil rights, civil rights movement to fight for um, equality for Chicanos, for people of Mexican ancestry in the United States. Okay, here's some myths. So one myth is that pure races exist, right? We talked about mestizaje in Mexico, but in fact, all of us are a product of mixing. We're all mestizos in one way or another. Pure races do not exist. People have been moving around the planet and having offspring since the beginning of time, okay? Another myth is that U.S. society is colorblind or post-racial, right? that somehow we've moved beyond race, that the color of our skin doesn't matter. The sociological evidence really suggests that we're not a colorblind society, that people do make assumptions about people based on how they look, that they're still categorizing people, and oftentimes this is a way to promote um, subordination, oftentimes and inequality is connected to racial and ethnic categories that really are still quite strong in our society. The other myth is that Latinos, that this is a homogeneous population. So we have this word Latino, we have this word Hispanic, but within the Hispanic or Latino population, it's a really diverse group, right? Really diverse group, people that look quite different, people that have different cultural ancestry, different cultural traditions, excuse me. Um, so it's a very diverse group. Um, Latinos are all immigrants, right? In LA, this really becomes apparent because Los Angeles has lots of folks that have lived here since the time of Pio Pico, since the time that California used to be part of Mexico. Uh, when you run into Latinos on campus, when you run into Latinos in our community, many Latinos don't speak Spanish, many Latinos have never been to Central America, have never been to Mexico. Um, many Latinos are not immigrants, just like, uh, are there as much immigrants as white populations are immigrants? Hmm. Right? Latinos are all Mexican. Now that's probably not an assumption in Arcadia, but it's a common misperception here in California. <coughs> here in California, because the uh, Mexican ancestry population is so large, so many people are Ancestry, in particular, non-Latinos, non-Hispanics, African Americans, Asians, uh, whites, often assume that if they meet a Latino, they must be first an immigrant, second have Mexican ancestry. Right? But that, in fact, is not the case. Um, United, uh, not United States, but California also has a large uh, Central American ancestry population. But we don't have very many uh, people with ancestry from the Caribbean. That's more of an East Coast phenomenon. We have very small um, Caribbean origin populations in the West Coast. Although there is an excellent Cuban bakery one town over that I highly recommend. <laughs> um, okay, so that's a, uh, another myth, is that all Latinos are Mexican. Again, that's very much a California phenomenon, and in particular from non-Latino populations that have this assumption. Okay, so people tend to categorize this linked to human condition, con cognition, it's how we think about the world. We're putting people into categories. But one thing to remember is that these racial and ethnic categories are social constructs. They're socially constructed. We create them within our own societies. We know this because the categories themselves vary across time, they vary historically, and they vary across place, right? Different categories, different countries. The same, same Vladimir Guerrero will be seen as being part of a different racial category, whether he's in the United States, Dominican Republic, Republic or Brazil. Okay, here's some questions that sociologists are considering about Latinos and Latinos and race and ethnicity. People are asking, will the definition of white expand to include non-black Latinos? Will Latin, Latino populations that are non-black be like Italians, be like people of Jewish ancestry that have been incorporated into this wide white category. Will they or will they not? There's current research being done on that question right now. Are black Latinos African Americans? Do black Latinos become African Americans over time? There's sociologists doing research on this right now. They gather data on um, educational achievement, 
on income, right? They gather data on how people are treated. They do interviews with black Latinos and black Latino immigrants. <laughs> and they're finding that there is quite a bit of pressure to for black Latinos to become incorporated within an African American or US black classification. Will Latinos adopt or opt out of existing US racial categories? Right? Will Latinos say, no, these categories, these don't work. Right? These don't work. We want something different. Uh, the evidence suggests that actually early first-generation immigrants tend to try to opt into the white category, but with future generations, uh, people tend to try to opt out of the existing U.S. category. And then when do immigrants begin to identify as Hispanic or Latino and why? Many immigrant populations don't see themselves as Hispanic or Latino. They see themselves as Mexican or Dominican or Cuban, right? When do people decide that it's useful to have a more pan-ethnic, Hispanic or Latino classification? And there's arguments that you can actually become more powerful as a group if you create solidarity across different groups, this idea of strength in numbers. 